guys and welcome to our Japanese garden escape. I'm Teresa and today we're gonna do a pretty much full garden tour. We've had a very very cold and long spring and finally the weather is nice and warm. This is really amazing. We're so happy. So many uh, shrubs and trees are in bloom still or just and uh, all, the, all the maples are out. We're gonna concentrate a little bit on our Japanese maples as well today and so I'm really excited to show you even more of our garden and how it looks now compared to the first garden tour we did. Before we get started, however, I would like to say a big, big thank you to all of you. So many of you have been supporting us. We received so many fantastic comments and so much wonderful feedback. This is really amazing. I mean, we just got started a few weeks ago with this channel and uh, we're absolutely delighted to receive all the feedback and wonderful comments we have so far. So thank you so much, guys. Please keep watching our videos. I hope you will enjoy them. Now let's... Um, Get started with the right here with this is our Kansan cherry. This is a Japanese cherry and uh, this one uh, is not in full bloom anymore, but it still has a lot of blossoms because it was so cold this year. This is why the blossoms actually stayed on a lot longer. Now they're starting to fall. It's a little bit windy today, but you see the leaves are coming out. So um, this means the blossom will end, but they are so beautiful. They're our absolute favorite trees in the garden. They are so lovely and so many bees are on this tree as well. Now let's walk down to our Zen area. So follow me guys. So here we have our stone steps. They are made of a natural slab and we basically just cut out this mound you can see here and uh, put these stone steps in. And you see all the moss around the around the stones. So this moss at the moment, because it's warm and dry today, it was the same yesterday, this is dry at the moment, but as soon as it rains, it will be really nice and green. Here you can see here it's greener because here it stays more moist. Here this area, I'm so, so gutted because <laughs> we've had a, such a beautiful azalea blossom. These are our uh, pink blooming Michiko azaleas. Uh, and this year, for some reason, many of them died. You'll see a bit later on. And I'm really so sad about this, so we're gonna have to take most of them out. I'm not quite sure what happened. Uh, we've had them for probably six years, and some of them even we planted last year, and it, it seems they do not like the shade, which is something I find really funny with azaleas, because azaleas are known for growing rather in shade or semi-shaded positions. And our azaleas in our plots, the ones that grow the best are the ones that grow in full sun. So they are the ones that was worried about most. But so, yeah, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll put in a picture. Uh, I have so many pictures of previous years, how lovely these azaleas looked. Um, anyway, let's move on, guys. Here coming through our first Japanese maples. So most of the maples we grow in our garden are Japanese maples, except for one. And we'll get to that one later on. Um, most of these maples, so the ones with uh, these kind of leaves, so the, the typical Japanese maple leaf, they fall under the name full moon maple, but there are many different maple names. So I'll put all those names in the description box down below. Um, we have uh, different varieties. So these like green ones, they look very, sorry about the wind guys, they look very um, bright green in spring. So these leaves, they're all very, very new and it's so beautiful and many of them turn bright orange in autumn. So most of these Japanese maples, especially the ones that are grown naturally, they have this beautiful natural shape. So you see these branches, they build pads as they grow naturally. So this is really, really nice. We do do maple trimming in autumn and I'm gonna show you that. Um, but yeah, just the, the normal shape they develop is so beautiful. Um, this one here is uh, probably also the full moon maple, uh, telling from the leaf uh, size or leaf shape. Uh, but this one you see has a bit of a darker color. You see, you can compare them. <laughs> this branch needs some pruning soon. Um, but also a very beautiful shape. This one grows more up because it gets a lot of shade at the bottom here. But uh, this one is also really beautiful. Then let's move on into our Zen area. Um, here, this is a, a holly, a Japanese holly. That one gets little uh, red berries in winter. That's very sweet. Um, then here, this is something, uh, oh, I need to show you the blossom of this later on in the year. This is called 
uh, mountain laurel and these blossoms they have uh, when they get them in a few weeks time they have really uh, a beautiful texture it looks like wax it's really quite amazing to see that here we have an example of a maple that died and i saw recently on on instagram for example or facebook a lot of uh, questions and comments about this um, we have uh, encountered that ever, uh, over the years several times with a lot of maple, especially smaller ones. And this one, I think this was a green one, not a red one. I've encountered it mainly with red Japanese maples, but on the ones where it happened to us at least most of the time are the ones that are grafted. You can see here that this maple is grafted onto a different uh, rootstock actually. And uh, sometimes, I do not know why, they just die. So we've had one year, I think it was about two or three years ago, when a lot of uh, new and small Japanese maples just died after the winter. So I have no explanation. None of them had any diseases or anything like that. Um, sometimes just a part of the maple dies, uh, but this one here died completely. It was perfectly fine last year. This is really interesting. Um, but I'm gonna do a little bit of research about um, maple diseases or reasons why this happens. This one here, is also an example of a maple that uh, died actually this one was a small red japanese maple and now you can see it is not red anymore and that's because uh, the original uh, root so the, the the piece where the where the maple was grafted onto started growing out of the of the grafted part of the red maple that died so you see here this comes from the original root um, and it just started growing and now look how big it is. So the red one died off and now we have, we have this green full moon maple here. And this one ooh, is certainly up for a pruning job. This is uh, uh, too big already for this area. Then, um, oh yeah, here this is another very beautiful one. We grow here in front of our uh, bamboo. So this bamboo is here more like um, a hedge. Uh, this one here has this um, dome kind of shape and it will not grow a lot taller it rather grows wider and this one is if you have a close look at the leaves this one is a variety called dissectum because the leaves look like um like they were sliced you see in several bits so i think it's a, it's a quite common type of maple really but it's just a different type and this one has greenish leaves um at this time of, of the year and they will turn red during the summer but how red they become depends on how much sun this maple gets. So this one has more like a semi-shade position, so they will turn red only slowly. And uh, towards autumn time, they may be completely red. Then uh, what's news here? Here we have, oh, those two are another two of these um, mountain laurels, the ones with the waxy blossoms. And this is another little bamboo. Uh, the two kubai, so this water basin here, that's still here, that needs some clean out. Um, and the, we soon need to observe the black bamboo behind me for any possibly escaping woods. I think we discovered some over there already. So we have to tackle that very soon. All right, then let's move on. Let's have a little look into this area here. I don't think you've seen this yet. So we have a little uh, shed here that was left by the, by the previous owners of this place. Um, it's quite useful. We got a lawnmower in there, which we unfortunately still have to use for now, and some rakes and some stuff like that. And um, this area, there used to be a compost pile here, and we removed that, and this is now somewhere else. And then uh, here there were some, some plants. There was an old flower bed in this area originally. But because we don't have flower beds in our Japanese garden, so we just left the soil really. And what happened, we had um, a few of these ferns. They're so beautiful. They're just natural and local to this area here. Um, they just grew here anyway because this is a shaded, a completely shaded position. And then we had some more of these ferns closer to the house which we transplanted to here, that was a few years ago. So we had maybe, I don't know, five or 10 ferns. And now look at it, it's all full. So I have actually started a, a year ago or so to take some ferns out that grow into the pathways like here. <laughs> um, because they really, really like it here. This is very good soil because we distributed some of the old um, compost soil just onto here. And um, yeah, so they really, they really like it. And you see they, they grow everywhere, so some, some of them here, they need to be taken out. Here I'm going to show you the, these really beautiful stone slabs we got here. 
you see that they got this pattern and they're completely or this one is completely overgrown with moss this one a little bit looks really really nice doesn't it and in this uh, at the fence here we thought we may put in a stone bench maybe one day to sit here under the tree this is such a beautiful space good here we have a little buddha and some uh, water basin here which i should fill sometimes the birds like to drink out of this one so um yeah that's our little area in front of the shade Okay guys, let's continue on the pathway. Um, before we do, yeah, this is uh, another very beautiful maple. This is another uh, full moon maple that has this really bright green and fresh color. It's almost a bit um, lemony really, isn't it? Um, or like lime or something like that. So really, really nice. And it gets, it will get a red, um, like the maple things, whatever they're called, <laughs> that built the seeds. Um, really, really nice. Um, now, this look, looking down here onto the pathway, this is one of my favorite views in the garden. Um, and in the first video I told you about that we grow most of our azaleas here. And uh, they have a pink blossom. They are the Michiko azaleas, but unfortunately, have a look guys. I could really cry to this. Um, have a look there. We do not have or a few blossoms here. We don't have a single blossom. So if you just stand here and have a look down. I do not know. So the same as with the other azaleas out there, as I mentioned, I do not know what happened here. Um, last year, this was one, one ocean of pink. And I'll, I'll put in a picture for you guys so you can see. It was every year since we planted them, uh, about six years ago, five or six years ago. And I don't know what happened. So you see they have a kind of a full shade position, um, but for some reason they don't like it. They have a few blossoms or a few parts are alive and the race just just died so i'm really i'm so gutted about this so this will be another little uh, pro or it's actually not that little it's a larger project <laughs> you will see <laughs> digging those out and uh, planting new ones new ones uh, probably this will be in autumn time because azaleas you can only get here where we live at least in spring and autumn time so we'll see um how it's possible to order them but anyway this is um yeah it, it, it's a shame but we'll we'll make it all new and all nice again um, this maple here is another one of my favorites. Uh, it's again this uh, dissectum kind, so with these sliced leaves. They have, I think it's seven. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yes. Um, really, really nice. Uh, and they have this fresh green. So this one was pretty small when we planted it uh, a few years ago. Has grown also quite big. Maybe needs some thinning, but it's so, it's so nice. I love these colors in spring when everything is so fresh and waking up and, and nice and green. Um, then moving on here, this one here has also become huge. <laughs> that one has grown so fast. This is this, um, I think this is also the full moon type of maple. Um, this one was about half the size when we planted it and it has become huge. So this one really likes it here. Has a basically a, well, either shade or either full sun position. So shade later on in the day. Uh, underneath we have some boxwood, they're growing nicely no moss on there yet this is too early in the year and here moving further on on the pathway you see some more bigger maples also growing really nice and oh you can see on this one you see this is what i meant these little what are they like little blossoms even you see that built the seeds then look at this so sweet and they are red and the leaves are green yeah we do get on on the ground we do get a lot of little maples you know the next year so the seeds they just fall down <laughs> we have lots of little ones um yeah and here look at that guys here our our, our well the rest of our michiko azaleas those here they are a lot denser this is a different type i think this one here was the very first azalea we actually planted in this plot um and those this just this little bit here they grow in full sun so we this is a southern southern position and um so south is like this way and we're on a slight slope so they get really a lot of sun uh, especially when it's hot in summer so i was actually worried about these azaleas because supposedly they do not like full sun but look at them they grow perfectly fine so it's kind of a question mark so if any any one of you knows what's going on here please let me know in the comments down below that would be really interesting to know um what else do we have back in here oh this is another um dissector maple a green one really really nice 
has a bit more of a shaded position in here. And um, let's maybe have a look around, walking through here. This is a, a cedar. And yeah, this is this is a very beautiful maple that's also a dissectum, but this is a red one. So you see it has um, red leaves. Um, they do come out a bit brighter and then they turn really dark red over the summer. So the more sun, the more red they will get. Very beautiful. This is also maple that builds this um, or is grown to grow in this dome kind of shape. So it will not really get taller, it will just get wider. So we already started pruning it back. Otherwise it would grow into the pathway too much. And then I just wanted to show you this one here. This is um, one of our red Japanese maples. So we do have a few red Japanese maples, also known as blood maples, I think. Um, really nice. And this, I think this was the very first Japanese maple we planted. So that one has been in there for, for years, has grown also really, really tall. Um, this was maybe about half the size when we planted it or maybe a bit more. So really nice. Um, has this um, yeah, typical Japanese maple leaf shape really beautiful and built a lot of seeds as well really love this one it's a very beautiful tree um down here yeah here we have a patch where we removed the grass uh from the from the moss video so this is all just uh dry for now it's at the moment too dry and a bit too hot i guess for moss to grow easily and also this is an interesting position because here is our black pine this is a beautiful old tree but for some reason, we have this area around the black pine where nothing really grows. So these little pines here, I think this one especially, I think I've planted two or three times. The other ones always died because it seems that the roots of this tree may take up too much water or nutrients. I don't know. But those guys at least grow. They like it here. And you see they get the new shoots everywhere. So, so that's, that's all right. But this, this spot is uh, one of the uh, mystery, mystery spots in the garden. <laughs> then... Um, here we have a small pond, and this is something I think you haven't seen yet. Uh, this is very little. I think it holds about a thousand liters of water, if at all. This one is uh, very overgrown with plants, and many of these plants have actually seeded out from the big pond. Don't ask me why. Maybe birds. I don't know. Um, they grow in here. Maybe the wind. So, um, yeah, this one has very clear water. It's not very deep, and um, it has um, yeah, a lot of plants. Okay, here we got some junipers. Uh, they are also very nice, need some pruning. This is a different type of juniper. And um, here we have a um, Nandina domestica that's called a sacred bamboo. This plant, it's not actually a bamboo, but it's its called like that. I will check if it falls under the bamboo family, but I don't think so. And this one, yeah, I love this one. This one has uh, red berries uh, throughout the winter, actually, so some are still on there. Uh, this needs pruning also away. And um, But you see this year, they have throughout the winter see they have dried tips like there so i don't know something happened this winter it's gardening areas every year different okay then let's move on to the big pond So this is another very nice Japanese maple. Um, this one has different leaves, and as far as I could tell and checked, this also falls on the Fulmo maple. But I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. I'm gonna double check, and yeah, I'll, I'll put all the, the plant names in the description box below. So let's see what's new at the big pond. Here we have the irises. Look how big they have become. Compared to when we when we cut the, the growth from last year, look how tall they are. So nice. So a few weeks more, more and they will be blooming. Then our black pines right next to it, they also have the new growth. You see everywhere, so sweet they start to grow up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is uh, something I will do very soon, which is uh, pruning actually the pines. Um, I'm also going to make a video about this because we don't want them to grow too big so they should stay in a certain shape. Then let's have a quick look to the pond. Here we got um, Japanese Andromeda. You see those growing full sun here and they really like it. 
So that's sometimes really interesting how plants like and don't like different spots. So I hope that you can maybe see our snails we got. Oh, look how many there are out. It's now a lot warmer. The water is warmer. <laughs> so look at those guys. <laughs> Everywhere. And they are newts as well, but newts unfortunately are very camera shy, except for the one we had in the uh, in the pond at the you know at in, in at the front of the house. That one didn't really wasn't bothered about the camera, but whenever I point the camera uh, at a newt uh, in this pond, they always disappear. So maybe, um, oh, maybe there is one. Maybe you can come a bit closer, have a look quickly. There's one swimming, right there. That one shouldn't be scared. so sweet it's so nice what's going on the plants are growing well so it's all everything's waking up and starting up okay um, then let's go around and to the other side and have a look from there this is also here something I love in spring the new growth in our spruces Look, isn't that sweet how bright and fresh and green it is? They're so soft. This is so sweet. Some people actually, um, they break these off and make tea with those, I think. I never tried that. So this is so sweet. Everywhere, on every, on every branch and every tip. It's really lovely. <laughs> you can now finally see our uh, pathway after the, the spring cleanup. So, uh, the stone slabs are now visible properly. Okay, um, here we have um, a swing actually, and Adam and I really like to sit here and enjoy the pond. And uh, I'm actually gonna sit down for a second. And you see, it's like a little Hollywood swing. <laughs> and this one, as you can see, this one doesn't really go with the Japanese garden. And I got this as a present from Adam many years ago for my birthday, which was absolutely fantastic because I really love this swing. But the, the style of it is more like a um, country home garden style. And the reason for that is that I really wanted this swing is because uh, originally we planned a different style of garden and just having a part of the garden as a Japanese garden before the inspiration for Japanese garden just took over. And we said we do it all in, you know, as a Japanese inspired garden. So um, yeah, and this is from, from the time um, before that idea was born with the Japanese garden. Uh, where this uh, swing or this style is coming from but anyway it's so beautiful and I love it so much and this is why we kept it and we have it here at our pond and if you turn around you can see the beautiful view so you see the water the maples our big spruces in the background and over there uh, like behind the maple and in between the spruces you can see Adam's plum blooming in pink so it's absolutely amazing it's so quiet and peaceful and there are so many birds we have in the garden. This is really, really beautiful. So, okay, um, let's walk over there and have a look at the other side of the garden. These are also coming out. They are um, uh, deciduous azaleas, so they will bloom in white. Um, they get leaves after their blossom, so this is why they look kind of dead at the moment, but you can see the new blossoms, even the leaves coming. Um, looking forward to those, they have really beautiful blossoms, we're gonna uh, rake it out for you. This is our Portuguese laurel that I pruned already a bit so that you can still walk past. Right, let's go this way. Um, yeah, here we are at our bridge. Love our bridge. Let's have a quick look because I love standing here. This is also one of my favorite spots in the garden because you can see the big pond if you turn this way and and the like half or what's that, a third of the creek and then as you turn the other way you can see the other side of the creek and the small pond up there. So that's really really nice, I love this view. 
here we have another um, sacred bamboo and here's some boxwood uh, this one here this shrub is also very nice this is an elderberry uh, this elderberry was already here and um, yeah we didn't really want to take it away because it's very old it smells really good you see the the blossoms are coming they have this like pad like uh, or plate like blossoms and you can actually eat those or make juice out of the fruit later um, so they really they smell so nice and it's yeah it provides a lot of shade so we left it and if you have a look in there um, it kind of grew together with the tree with the big pine but um, the, the other root on the, on the pine actually is from the ivy that grows on the pine. And it always reminds me of um, the jungle, <laughs> you know, some movies in the jungle where you have these trees or, or temples with roots growing up. So I love this, you know, looking into there, like a little picture. Um, it's, uh, yeah, pretty cool, pretty amazing. So here is our uh, area where we have all the rhododendron. And uh, look at this, the first ones are blooming. This is uh, the uh, yellow one. Look at that. Aren't they beautiful? So big, look, compared to my hand. So beautiful. And we got some more down here. Look at that. There was only one open a couple of days ago, one single blossom, and that's so nice. So then we have, um, this one here that's also interesting because I was looking at that and it doesn't seem like it's getting any blossoms this year. Hmm. I do not know why that is, or maybe maybe they are coming later. I'm not sure if that's leaf or a blossom, we'll see. Those are, as far as I know, um, a Japanese type of rhododendron. Also, those guys are a bit late this year. Yeah, as I said, everything is a bit later because of this cold, long spring. Anyway, then uh, let's have a look at some more maple. Down here, I think this area we haven't really shown yet either. So those two here are um, also the uh, full moon maples so in green. And those guys, so the ones with this bright green color, they turn into a beautiful orange in autumn. Um, I can't wait. <laughs> and um, even though I want summer first. <laughs> but um, yeah, so they, they are um, still very young. We planted them about mm, two years ago and they can just, we, we don't prune those so they can just grow because we want to um, yeah, basically close this view of the fence here. So in winter still you're gonna see it, but for the summer we wanna have uh, big maples here. Um, this maple here, this is um, probably the biggest one we have. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. Um, also a Japanese maple, also this uh, full moon type of maple. And uh, look at the, the branch structure, it's so nice. And with this maple, this is one example where we had um, I think about two-thirds of this maple died in one year. That was maybe three years ago. Uh, for some reason it was perfectly fine the year before when we planted it. And then uh, two-thirds uh, just died. So they just didn't grow anymore the next spring. No idea what happened. And uh, But look how it has recovered. So it has fully grown. So we just pruned the dead bits back. And I just let it grow. So since then I haven't actually touched it yet. I have just cleaned out the uh, dried you know, branches and uh, but it grows so nice now it has a beautiful shape and it has more like um, um like a thinner and longer shape so it's perfect to to cover the fence really beautiful and we had actually a second one of that size right back there where the small ones are now and this one unfortunately died completely i don't know why um anyway but now this one at least is growing which is fantastic and here this is our maple. It's not even not even fully open yet. Very slow this year. Uh, this is the only maple that is not a Japanese maple. This is a Norway maple. So it has a dark red leaves, uh, quite big leaves actually. They get quite large. Um, we planted it because it grows taller a lot faster, really, because it's uh, here at least it's very difficult to get uh, large Japanese maples because they. I mean, sometimes they grow fast, but sometimes they grow slow depends but it's difficult to get maples of the size of like this one here and uh, so this is why a few years ago we decided to plant in this in this spot here the um the norway maple this one has grown quite tall so this is like a proper tree already and um yeah also very beautiful very beautiful this one is another one of my favorites oh you hear the birds there's so many birds in the background they're like fighting um and you see them flying around it's really funny um this one is also kind of a 
I guess it's a dissectum kind of rarity because it has sliced leaves um, in red. I love this one because the canopy is so nice. It's uh, so this is not not even pruned. This is just naturally grows like that. Really love this one. When oh, I'm always picking out um, <laughs> branches from from our uh, large, uh, two larges actually, one here and one right above you, that uh, throw down from the um, yeah little branches from the big dry branches. Anyway, just put this here for now. So um, ah, look at that. Some more rhododendron blossoms. Look, the white ones. How beautiful. How beautiful. All the other ones are a bit slow. Mm, not quite open yet. It will come. This one is about to open. That's a pink one. You can see that here. Coming on that blossom here. So, very soon. You see? Pink. Very beautiful. And then we got, uh, yeah, this one here. Uh, oh, this maple first, sorry. So many lovely things I want to show you. This is um, one of my absolute favorite maples in the garden. Also full moon maple turns into a fantastic orange in, the gar uh, in, in autumn. And it has a really beautiful natural shape. So also this one I haven't really pruned a lot yet. Just uh, some cleaning out some dried leaves. And um, I really love this one. It's, uh, it's so beautiful. And it has a lot of space to grow. This rhododendron here, I'm not quite sure what happened with this. So we, we, in recent years, we tend to get a very warm early, early spring and then several nights of frost and cold weather. And this one, look, I think the, the blossoms died of frost maybe. So I don't think this is going to bloom this year, which is a shame. Again, kind of ironic because they bloom every year like the azaleas and the year we start filming <laughs> we run into issues with the blooms. But that's life, that's gardening. Every year is different. So um, then let's move on towards uh, this area up there actually because you haven't seen the details there yet. You see ferns even here. These burn. We started out with like the 10 that we uh, scrambled together <laughs> and now uh, they are just everywhere. Um, so if anyone local needs ferns, we got plenty of ferns. Anyway, um, yeah, this one here, that's um, a plum. Look at it, in full plume. Um, it has red leaves and it's so beautiful. I will double check what type of plum exactly it is. Um, so we planted this as, I mean it has grown since we planted it, but it was quite big already when we did. Uh, it was kind of interesting to transport it <laughs> and to get it down here, but uh, it's so nice. Such beautiful blossoms. This one here is also a type of um, a flowering cherry type, uh, but it blooms in early spring. I think it was visible on, on the first garden tour, uh, but also this one I'm pruning in this uh, Japanese type of shape, which is more like an um, upstanding kind of a semi-circle bowl kind of shape. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> so I'll show you that too. Uh, this one here is the biggest azalea we have, the biggest Japanese azalea. Uh, oh, look, the first one is open. How sweet. So beautiful. Yeah, you see also this one has a position where it has, well, semi-shade in during the day, but then now the sun, you see full sun, grows perfectly fine. I really love this. Oh, have a look here. The, um, the Japanese black grass. This is starting to grow, you see, everywhere. Nice and green, and then when they're a bit taller, they will turn red, so the tips will turn red. Very nice, goes well with this maple. That's another of this dissectum variety and it's fantastic green. Okay, that's a Japanese laurel. Then um, I'll walk on this side actually. This one here is my favorite um, sacred bamboo. This is the tallest one I've ever seen in a, in a nursery. And so I took it and uh, yeah, I love this one. But also you see they all had this year, they were a little bit offended it seems uh, with this cold spring weather. So, but they'll grow again. It's all fine. Now this one here. 
Then uh, let's have a look at this area. This maple here is also a Japanese um, full moon maple. And this is my favorite maple in the whole garden. It's kind of difficult to pick a favorite one because I love them all. But this one here uh, is absolutely stunning. So we pruned this one pretty hard last year because it was growing too tall. And this one we want to keep to about the size, as you can see here. Um, it has this, yeah, this really bright green color, you see, and where it gets more, so you see here, this is more shaded, so it stays green. And where it gets more sun, it turns into orange. And this one has an absolutely stunning bright orange in autumn, so yellow, yellow orange. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I love the shape, because we also consider always the, the branch structure and the shape. Uh, you can see, obviously, the branch structure is something that can be seen better during autumn or winter. But um, it's just that it's also a beautiful picture. Here we grow some more Japanese, ooh, Japanese Andromeda. Um, really, really nice. This one here is another, ooh, <gasps> I stepped into <laughs> Japanese bloodgrass. What did I say in the video? Don't step on it. <laughs> Oops. Um, this one here is also a very beautiful Japanese maple. Um, also this dissectum type of maple. But this one only has one to four, actually. No, five uh, parts to a leaf. So it's a different type. There's another la lava lamp or a stone lamp behind there, you can see. And um, what else do we have here? Uh, this is another tiny little Nandino domestica, sacred bamboo. Uh, that's a uh, Portuguese laurel. And here, this is where we grow our white blooming azaleas. They are about to pop open, you see, soon they will be coming. And these, you see, they grow here in full sun pretty much all day. It gets very hot here and they just grow perfectly fine. So the bigger ones here, they are a few years old or a few years since we've planted them. And you see these ones, we ordered some more back there. They are um, yeah, younger still, but they grow perfectly fine. You see how many blossoms they're getting, so they'll be absolutely full. Um, we're gonna film that when they're open. It will be a beautiful picture. Right, um, behind me uh, are the two silver thorns. If you remember from the last garden tour, you only saw them yeah, just without leaves because it was early in the year. And now look at them. They're huge, so beautiful, and they have so many blossoms. And I'm not sure if you can see the video, but there are bees everywhere, bees and bumblebees. We have so many bumblebees this year, this is so beautiful. And you can hear the, I will be quiet for a minute, and you can hear the, the humming of the bees, I hope. So whilst the wind blows, let's keep walking. So this mound here, I think you haven't seen yet. This is, um, uh, we have these brown, uh, sorry, black gray stones um, here. And oh, you see how this is overgrown with moss. Ah, I love this. This is amazing. And those stones are lava stones, as far as I remember. They look dark, so they should be. And we got some underneath here and here, so they are for decoration here. They are different type of stone and not necessarily typical for Japanese garden, these round type of stones, but uh, we love them and we thought they fit well on this mound. And on this mound we have mainly um, uh, evergreen, so needle uh, shrubs and trees. Uh, we got uh, this one here, that's a uh, cedar, it should be. I'll double check. Um, and some uh, junipers growing as a ground cover here. And uh, this one here, oh, I need to double check this one. I actually don't know what this one is. But, um, oh, you see, this one is a cleaning out job anyway. So, a lot to do always in the garden. Okay, then um, here we have another boxwood. This one has grown quite big. was never really affected by the, by the moth. And um, now let's continue towards the bamboo. This one here is one of our biggest pines. I mean, the pines that grow is more like a bush. Uh, you can see it has kind of a funny shape this year. And it hasn't, it hasn't quite stood up yet properly. 
because what happened is we had uh, this winter we had not a lot of snow but we had um, several times snow and the snow was very heavy so it contained a lot of water um, and when this snow is so heavy uh, the big bamboo the golden bamboo right next to it lies down pretty much completely believe it or not and um, it was uh, because this happened so many times so the bamboo kept like lying on <laughs> onto this on this uh, pine here and has squished it so even though we clean out uh, clean out the snow um from you know off the bamboo and other plants when it's so heavy but uh yeah this one is still in that kind of squished shape so i hope it will it will stand up the position this one here is not a hundred percent happy even though it has some but i know underneath there is actually there's some water some natural so naturally water running through and it doesn't like it too much but we really wanted it in this position i think over the years it has gotten used to it it's growing quite all right actually uh, except for back here where it has no lights so that's normal that it's uh, rather yeah not growing that well but um uh, yeah it's i really love this one it's so it's so nice good then let's see how the bamboo is doing our golden bamboo let's see if it's starting to shoot oh we got a look we found a bird's nest in the bamboo that fell down Oh, there were eggs in there, look. So sweet. It's amazing what birds build, isn't it? I mean, look at it. It's like a masterpiece. Like some ferns, some moss. I am birds, by the way, so if you're trying to grow moss, uh, birds will take it for their nest. So be prepared to find a moss mess sometimes because they just pick it out. I'll just leave that here. Um, this one here, so we'll do uh, anyway, a separate video about bamboo where I will talk more about it, but I'm just looking for new shoots. Oh, not yet this year. Normally they're coming out around this time of the year, but everything's later this year. Here we have another very beautiful maple. Uh, this is also a dissectum type of maple, so this like sliced leaves, and this is a full moon maple. This one was actually grown from seed. Um, this one is from a nursery and it's really beautiful we loved it so adam chopped back some of the arrow bamboo just a few days ago so that this maple can grow properly uh, it grows kind of sideways which is really great so i love it there and this one i love as well it's very very beautiful okay then um uh, let's maybe have one more one look at the moss you already know this bit from the first tour i love this bit of moss and hopefully everything under the uh, silver thorns oh bumblebee um, will be overgrown with moss. So if you look in, this is already starting to, to grow. And when we got this place originally, there were a lot of weeds under these silver thorns. So cleaning out underneath the bushes is actually one job I do every year, and I'm going to show you that too. Um, but I'm doing that a bit later because whilst they're blooming, you see here these nice little blooms, very sweet, and then they get fruit after that which you can eat apparently, but they don't taste very well. <laughs> and, um, the, uh, so we have so many bees, so that I just want to leave the bees alone. And then, um, yeah, after the blossom, I'll go under and clean out. Okay, let's move further up. Um, here we have another quite big patch of azaleas. They are white blooming azaleas. Really, really nice. So also those guys here, they grow in pretty much full sun and they really like it. They are very new. We planted them, I think. Uh, two years or one and a half years ago in autumn time and we put some underlay down so there are no weeds growing but these will be overgrown by moss uh, very soon it's actually already starting to grow on the underlay so this is really really nice then here in this area we have um this is like a, a bit of a nursery area so here we have a couple of maples a few maples that didn't have a proper home yet and uh, we planted them here for now so <laughs> these small ones right here i just stuck them in there for now i bought them originally for bonsai but i don't do a lot of bonsaiing anymore so uh, i just stuck them in this is another dissect maple very nice but leaning forward a bit too much so i need to prop it up and this one here very beautiful so this will grow here but we'll keep it short because we want to see the um uh corkscrew hazel back there in the background the corkscrew hazel is nothing really you find in japanese gardens but this was already here and it's so beautiful so it has these like um i'm gonna walk in there these like uh, you see twisted kind of branches i really love it you see in there it's so so pretty it's so nice yeah so this is why we didn't want to cut this one down even though it's not japanese actually but um anyway oh and here we got the what are they called you see we didn't plant those guys i think may may something 
maybe you guys know or well, I'll check um, they just grow here I guess from the previous owners they may have planted some bulbs one day and look at that they're everywhere they're getting more every year but we let them they fit well here one holster this is also from the uh, previous owner still in there I'm pretty sure I ducked this one out at one point but it's still parts of it still remain um, anyway and so this was originally a flower bed because but we don't have flower beds and so this is why we made this kind of semi nursery slash um, yeah just where we have maples and, and uh, Japanese Andromeda and a couple of boxwoods over there and the moss is growing here well um, pretty fast actually on, on this plot here I'm surprised because this one gets a lot of sun and moss started to grow here just a few months after we cleared this area there was grass originally and um, a lot of weeds a lot a lot of weeds I remember um, weeding a lot in this area anyway here you can see we have this age guard I mentioned in the uh, pathway video that we use it somewhere else in the garden that's here that's because the slope is a bit more up here and because this is a uh, graveled with a bit more gravel so it's a bit deeper and uh, here on this side we have it to prevent soil from running into the gravel because we yeah, you can see here with this happens over time when we get a strong rain in summer and so it, you see the soil flashes in and this um, age guard um, prevents that and on the other side here of that pathway we have it so that the gravel doesn't roll all the way down because otherwise if you keep you know walking on it then it will start just uh yeah rolling away um so this is where we where we use it so this is just the stuck in really you see this moves and uh yeah it's uh, perfect for this area this one here is also really sweet this was already here this plant um this is a fir and it's very soft and, and sweet and it has you see the new growth i love it it's so sweet to look at this and it has this really nice and compact shape uh, so yeah love it there love it there all right let's walk around to the front of the house oh just whilst we're walking let me show you these guys this one here is a golden large um, which I bought originally as to have as a bonsai but then I decided to plant it and it was about that tall and since it has been planted in the in the ground properly it has become really really big um, just coming out the new growth and those three here are Japanese largest and there I love look at this new growth it is so sweet when you touch it it's so soft it's like it feels like silk I love this it's so sweet so they are growing here happily hopefully but they look good they look really good okay here we got some more um white azaleas also about to to pop open uh here we have japanese andromedas and the red cedar and this little area here actually <laughs> this is um only half japanese uh garden area so these rocks in in this bit here the ones with the with the moss over them on them uh, they were actually already here so this was a rockery um that was here that was uh yeah planted or done by the uh, former owners at the beginning we didn't even know that there was a rockery because all this was overgrown with heather so you couldn't really see the rocks this was just not um, maintained uh, that well anymore and it was completely overgrown and then we started to remove the old headers they were already dry and kind of dead and then we found these beautiful rocks and what we did um, because we really liked them we kept them and we planted some of the uh, succulents here you see everywhere um, it's not really Japanese but it's kind of sweet and uh, so this is why we extended this a little bit all the way to back there and tied it in then with the with the bigger rocks which you find in Japanese gardens so yeah and this one here this um, Japanese Andromeda um, this is one I think I have two here and they're already quite big you see growing really nice they have a semi-shade position and this one here uh, half of it died like a year after I planted it I don't know why this keeps happening with these plants and then the rest you see how it grows perfectly fine so it's again another question mark from me that I can't explain in uh, the Japanese garden anyway and here we got one more little maple I made a replant this one I think it's not not really super happy here um, beautiful dissectum variety so nice and green 
but I think it's a bit too dark for this maple here and maybe a little bit too dry so I may replant this one okay then here they also have a rhododendron this one is a white blooming one but those I'm not sure if this one will have blossoms because they get a lot of shade so this entire area gets a lot of shade uh, from the big trees uh, the oaks and the white birches we have here and one two three oaks and um, so not sure we, we wanted it because it fills out the area nicely um, but it's not ideal an ideal spot for the rhododendron here we have uh, that was the from the first garden tour the little flowering cherry so nice and green by now and here we have another mound with white azaleas should be blooming soon back there I can walk in it's all dry anyway here's where we planted the Japanese hollies in this area and those guys here they are also deciduous azaleas so we have those two here they bloom in white also those here uh, they're about to open and with these guys I saw this year that uh, they are not going to bloom you see they get leaves oh here are a few um, but probably they will not they will not bloom because I think they don't have enough sun here so we'll see all right let's uh, walk up to our pond at the at the entrance as you already know Ooh, someone is still fishing. Yeah, it was it was a beautiful day but it was pretty um windy today it still is so yeah this is what we have to do on a regular basis because a lot of stuff is coming down from trees it's going past <laughs> oh, and this one here i wanted to show you i love this one here this is horsetail and we grow this here next to our entrance door you find this a lot in in japan actually at entrance doors are right next to house walls and i love it so this one grows in the shade here's actually a water plant but you can you can grow it in um yeah shady positions i suppose maybe even in sun i'm not sure um so as long as it has enough water that's fine and i really love it and it always gets new shoots uh, sometimes they are too long so they start to to um you know to do this to tip over but yeah i really love those guys anyway let's um oh i'll actually walk over the pond <laughs> why not this is black bamboo also we grow next to the pond i don't think i mentioned this before and um, this one has a root block this is actually one split up plant from the black bamboo we have down there in the um, Zen area. We had two originally, two plants, and one stayed down there because it grew really big and the other one we split up and put into this one here. So that also, it has some, uh, some um, sticks in there to support it because it's not that thick yet. So sometimes it doesn't stand up by itself yet. This will come in a, I don't know, a couple of years maybe. Right, then let's have a look at the last part of our garden tour for today which is the same area at the front of the house and um, we have filmed the planting of this area in two videos actually at this point whilst we're filming this video i'm not sure if you're gonna see the planting before this video or after this video but just so you know it's all covered so we've all filmed it and yeah this is how it looks at the moment we have uh, removed this uh, windswept here if you remember um, or maybe yeah depending on when you see the planting of this video there was a, a little pine that had kind of a windswept shape because it was shaded out on one side and unfortunately it didn't um, survive the transplanting so we had to remove it so we're still looking for another pine for that spot we haven't found one yet and um, this is what we what we planted recently this the uh, uh, red pine this is it was also transplanted but this is not still not or not doing well it doesn't have any new growth um, we broke off a branch recently and it was still green we'll see uh, if it goes if not then we'll have to find another one I would be sad to to lose this one anyway um, here we have um, a Japanese yew and some uh, boxwood and some Japanese hollies here that's an English yew that one here very nice shape uh, some more Japanese hollies there's a little red pine right there this is a type of pine that grows more compact. This one has survived the transplanting. And back here are the Portuguese laurels, uh, five of them. And we're gonna let those guys grow to, um, so that we can't see the fence and the road too much. Okay, 
Oh yeah, and down here, this is also uh, a nice little area. It's not really used. We have some boxwoods, some Portuguese laurel. All right, guys, I think that's it for today. We've done pretty much the entire garden. Um, thank you so much again for your support. It's absolutely wonderful, I must say. We didn't expect anything like that at all. And it's really absolutely fantastic. So we're so happy about all of your support. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give us a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And, <laughs> and uh, see you next time, guys. And thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye.